Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video. Now, before the video begins, massive shout out to our sponsor, NordVPN, long term partner of the channel. And if you use the link and the code HUZZY in checkout, you can get yourself a crazy deal. I believe it's like 70 odd percent off a two year deal. And if you use the code HUZZY, you get a couple extra months free at checkout. So make sure you check that out down below. Again, if you don't know what a VPN is, basically it's there to protect you online, gives you an extra layer of security to the baddies that may want to kind of. Think of it as like if you're online, especially with Wi-Fi, you're kind of using you're sending your data one way of looking online. There are some bad people that will kind of be looking down the other end. And if you're doing online shopping or banking or emails, sometimes people can see what you're doing and having a VPN kind of blocks that. So if you're especially in public or you're staying somewhere, a hotel, coffee shop, library, wherever it may be, somewhere public is always a good idea to protect yourself. And that's where I'd recommend Nord. There are obviously more use cases, like more casual ones of opening Netflix libraries and stuff. But if you are in the market for a VPN, please do check out Nord with the link and description down below. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy or will enjoy the video, please do throw a like on the video. Hopefully you like my nice Magic Carp summer shirt and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, I'm here bringing you another video. Now, welcome back to Unranked to Diamond. We're doing a little bit of a special edition though, so we've not done one of these in a while. This is a replay POV commentary. So you'll have the POV of me playing, um, but obviously for whatever reason, as we'll kind of find out in this game, I stopped recording and I focused more on the game. And sometimes we do an actual replay replay, but I had the footage, I didn't put music on or anything, so I can kind of get rid of my audio that I did when I was actually streaming this and I can just do an actual new commentary. So there's the load of Madude so it's a high plat game. Uh, but the unfortunate thing, as yes, you'll notice, is yes, there is an enemy duo. Twitch jungle, which is a little bit weird. You, you don't really see Twitch jungle anymore, basically at all. Uh, but there is a duo. So Kale, top lane, is a one-trick fizz, but is duo with the Twitch. Um, we have a duo of the Yasuo and Lux. And uh, yeah, the Vayne, you're point I'm seeing, I'm pointing out there, that the Vayne is an auto-filled support player playing Vayne. So I've always said, if you do get auto-filled, which is fine, we all get auto-filled, be smart about your auto-fill. Picking Vayne as an auto-filled support probably isn't the best idea. More basic, you know, Caitlyn or something is probably the way to go. Um, but yeah, the enemy Jin seems pretty pretty spicy as well. He looks pretty good. And you know, there's a little bit of diamond floating around in these matches now. Uh, but yeah, if you can do me a massive favor and throw a like on the video, it does help out the channel more than people realize. Um, but we are, the way that I would explain is in this match, I was kind of trying to mentally prepare myself to get encamped. You know, they are a duo queue. It's an annoying, cheesy Twitch pick. And logically in my head, you're picking Kale Top, who hyperscales, and a cheese early game jungler. Surely you're just going to camp top lane to give the Kale a free lane phase, especially that you're duo. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But we are playing Aurelia. I should actually point out it is a donated pick. Oh, I can't remember who it's donated from and I can't check right now. Uh, can I check right now? Eh, maybe I can. Hang on. I will double check right now who it is. I think I can. Uh, yes, I can. So this pick was donated from Solid Swede. So thank you very much, Solid Swede, for donating Kale. Um, I didn't use the skin because I don't think I own the skin, um, unfortunately. Oh, no, that's the wrong pick. Not Kale. I'm an idiot. Uh, Aurelia. Soraka Amelia, there you go. Sorry, I, I, we're against the Kale. I'm not playing Kale yet. Uh, we're playing Aurelia and it's donated from Soraka Amelia. But I'm playing Aurelia. Aurelia is my kryptonite, so some people will know that. But yes, Aurelia is my kryptonite pick. I never can beat this champion for basically anything. Um, I always get owned from it. And a lot of it, I will say, is because of like pre-existing like thoughts that are embedded into my mind. I am an old school League of Legends player, obviously. Uh, played a long time and for me it's a very weird experience to be like kale is sorry aurelia is early game it just doesn't work in my head but she is early game you know if you get passive procced on aurelia it's over a thousand gold at level one worth of stats that's mad so i'm just kind of doing so what i'm doing here is i'm replicating the behavior of aurelia's that i've played against because obviously i don't play aurelia meanwhile bot lane's dead twitch actually went bot not top um, but i don't play aurelia but i've played a lot against a lot of them and they always go hyper aggressive at level one, level two, and I end up dying like pretty much most times. Even if like I'm not dying to her this game, I'll end up dying this game. And it's like, oh great. Um, I just get it's just scary how much damage this champion has. 
So obviously, Kale, I will say, tomorrow I am going to be playing on my main account. So today was an unranked to diamond session. Tomorrow is going to be a main account session. Hopefully climbing back to at least diamond two or something. I'm going to be playing a bit of Kale. So reminding everyone, the unranked to diamond series is where we have diversity in picks. We play everything. Meanwhile, I get the E with a stun. Look at the damage. We do take a tower hit, which is unfortunate. Watch this. Boom. Boom. Just get it. Just boom. Just straight up dead. And that's the type of thing that I died to Aureli all the time. Literally, like, out of nowhere, you're like, oh, I died. Kale didn't even flash. So, like, that's the point. Incredible kill pressure in the early game does Aurelia. Uh, but, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be playing a lot of the main account. Obviously, that nowadays, that's the king pleb. Um, I'm going to be spamming Kale because the unranked diamond is diversity in picks. Main account, more serious. We want to climb back to high diamond at least. And I think... You know, this is a huzzy top tip, I guess. There is no reason not to play Kale nowadays. She's a late game hyper carry that gets strong basically 10 minutes into the game because of just how season 11 is. There is no early game, you know, that there really isn't. Um, so there is no real bad reason to why not play Aurelia. Uh, sorry, uh, play Kale. I'm, I'm weirdly confusing these two champions. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, but anyway, I need to push in the wave. So the, the reason why I chose the teleport um, was that. Need to push it in. Don't let her freeze. Um, and yeah. So bot, uh, mid lane, sorry, they go for a, a nearly a kill. But yeah, if Kane went for that, I think he would have ended up dead. So our comp, which we haven't really gone over. Aurelia, Kane, Vlad, Kale with Lux support. So mainly an AD comp. A little bit of AP with a Lux. Um, and when it comes to scaling, both teams scale pretty well. And boom, we get her flash. If she didn't flash away there, she was going to die. Because I got the double potential for the Q. But that's nice. Again, getting the Kale, getting the pressure, always good. Um, but we scale not bad. Like Aurelia, she's more early game to mid game than late game nowadays. But it doesn't mean she's useless. If a, a squishy champion mispositions in late game, yes, a Kale, uh, sorry, an Aurelia can kill it. Uh, she's just more known for having that crazy lane dominance. Um, Yasuo, the typical Yasuo player obviously feeds, but they do scale. They get two crit items and they will eventually pop off. Vayne. Another late game hyper carry champion and Kane. This Kane, I think he was going blue Kane. Uh, meanwhile, looking potentially for the dive, but I missed the stun with the Kale. I think she might have pressed W to get the speed up and then run away. Um, but yeah, we do scale okay. Enemy comp scaling. Kale, obviously no brainer. Scales amazingly well. Vladimir scales incredibly well. Jin scales pretty damn well. Um, and they're, I think, junglers AP Twitch. It's supposed to scale, I think, but I've I've personally never been that scared of Twitch. I think people know that. Um, you know, no offense, but generally, especially as that, but especially players that play like Twitch jungle, I'm never going to be scared of those players as individuals, really, because it tends to be the worst players play the cheesy picks. And then the enemy support, I think, is Velkoz. He does scale not bad. Again, he's got true damage. He doesn't have like unlimited cap scaling, obviously, but like maybe scales better than a Lux. Um, but they get a double kill bot lane, so the Jin ends up with a double kill. I'm going to clear the wave, push it into tower, and then I'm going to go back. So I pinged Dragon, by the way, you know, you know, 30 seconds ago, and was like, you know what, Infernal Dragon's alive. That wasn't exactly like, oh, we have to do this right now. I like to occasionally just ping objectives just to make my jungler aware, like, oh, you should think about doing this in the near future. I think the Kane took it literally, because you can see he's trying to do it. I think he took it literally of, oh, you want me to do this right now? So he is trying to solo it. Level 5 Kane um, with Dark Harvest. So it's a squishier version, not Conqueror. And look how close it is. He does end up getting it. But that was incredibly close. Very good that he got it. Um, and there's Twitch. Level 4. Um, so he is quite behind, I think. Because I think the Kane's level 5 at least. And uh, yeah. So I, I think I make a mistake here. So, you know. Level 4 Twitch. Very squishy. And naturally, yes, the duo Q. Kale's waiting in a bush. I miss my ulti. I get the nice double stun. I try to flash away. But then, alas, mid lane, boom, Vladimir. So, three people on me. But obviously, the duo Q up in top lane. That was a bit meh. Because I will say, if I played that well against the, the two of them, I potentially could have 1v2'd. If I got my passive stacked up, if I hit my ultimate, got a good stun... They're very squishy, both of them. I probably could have near enough one-shot the Twitch. Obviously, there's Kale ult, but I probably could have 2v1 that if I played it really well. But I panicked a little bit, missed my ult, and unfortunately for me. So, yeah, that sucked. Um, 
But you can see the Kale in top lane farming well. She's out farming me. That's my point. There's no bad reason to play Kale. She's now level 7, so she's basically past early game Kale. She, she's fairly strong. Obviously goes without saying, if she actually tries to fight me just standing still, a Kale will lose. Um, you know, she's not designed just to be able to stand still and kill anything. But if the Kale plays it well, that she kind of uses her range, gets good poke here or there. I mucked up there, if you noticed. I missed my Q on the wrong thing, and that got rid of that got my Q on cooldown. So that sucked. Um, but yeah, she can't just stand still. She has to kind of play smart about it. Um, but she, you know, there's no... A good Kale at this point was looking pretty damn... Pretty damn good to, like, carry the game, I would say. Um, I am scared, I will say also at this point, that I'd use Flash. The duo queue knows that. I am scared that Twitch may be top lane again. Yeah, so you can see there is being Dove, Vladimir, just straight up diving him. So I will say it was about this time in the game, you could probably tell that things aren't going good. I think I kind of stopped commentating roughly around this time. And then eventually I'm like, okay, screw it. It's not going to be a live commentary. Um, but that's, but again, it's not a negative in that avenue. It's sometimes very hard to remain, as we all know, positive in a lot of situations. Uh, in League of Legends, it's a very intense game. And if what I can do is stop the, the commentary, stop like, oh, this is 100% a YouTube video, um, you know, the pressure of that. And I can refocus myself and, and try to, you know, focus back on the game. That's a positive, not a negative. So you can see Kane tried to go on the Vladimir and ended up nearly dying. So uh, you know, Vladimir is doing well in the early game is obviously scary also. Um, you know, two champions just in this game. I, I said earlier, play Kale, also play Vlad. You know, very easy champion to play as Vladimir. Monstrous champion in his lane phase is not even that bad. So a lot of minions, which is an advantage for an Aurelia. Land the stun, land the ulti. Which this gives me a lot of direction. So landing the ulti makes me have a lot of minions. And the attack reset. I don't think I was going to kill her. But I used attack move there. And the Kale went out of vision. So it made me move towards the minion instead. I don't think she was dead. I didn't have a way to stay on top of her. But it's nice damage. Uh, bot lane Vayne dying again. Um, I think I might have said in this during this commentary. When I was streaming it earlier. Going I'm not too surprised that bot lane is losing. Because again it is an autofield support player. Playing Vayne. <laughs> like. I think most of us would probably expect uh, the Vayne to lose at that point. Uh, but I am going to get maybe a tower plate. Unfortunately for me, the, 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 the Kane, some of you may have noticed on the minimap over there, I got the Kale very close to death. The Kane was in the area. He decided to farm instead of actually go for the kill. It probably would have been a free kill for him, but he just wasn't interested. Uh, there are a lot of players, it's crazy as it sounds, they don't look at minimap while they play um a lot of people will say that's their weakness they do not notice what is going on in the game because they don't focus on the minimap at all uh kane now ganking top lane though and i do look for the stun and the kale does flash so again getting a flash is always nice uh that's really good for me range versus melee matchup it, you know aurelia as a champion she's very good into range matchups for the most part you know typically people like nar you know, Nar is a good champion. If you struggle in top lane, you have that range advantage. Or Teemo. Aurelia has always been the champion to pick into those type of champs. She beats range matchups. Meanwhile, Twitch mid lane trying to get a kill. I don't think they're going to get it. Aurelia, sorry, uh, Kale, she does. They do get the kill in the end. Kale teleports quite aggressively. And, uh, you know, reminding she doesn't have flash. So I am thinking now maybe there is a kill potential soon. Bot lane do end up getting a nice kill on Velkoz. And, uh... Yeah, so the Twitch, from memory, goes AP Twitch, which I do think nowadays is definitely the wrong Twitch to go. I think they did nerf that quite hard, so AD is just superior. And it's not even just that. Like, if you look at the comp, the enemy team, Kale is AP, Vlad is AP, um, their support, Velkoz is AP. They only have Jin for AD, and Ch Twitch also chose to go AP. That is also a mistake just right there and then. He should have gone AD to kind of split the damage even more. But uh, yeah, so we've hit level 8. We're equalized, obviously, in levels. We're nearly level 9. And you can see I'm kind of freezing it, looking for that Q engage that you Q to a minion and then you Q to go for the Kale or you E then at that point. So I'm auto-attacking that minion to give me the entry. So boom. We miss the ulti, which is not a great start. Ult, though, which then gives my passive and just straight up attack wall. I'm going to win it. So that's the thing that the Kale did bad. No flash. I knew that. So I was constantly looking for this type of engage. And we finally get it. We do miss this stun. But then the Kale stays in range for Like in melee basically. And she ends up dead. Uh, unfortunately Yasuo dying again in the 1v1. So not doing too good. 6-2 Vladimir from lane phase is always going to be scary. 
Uh, I am, you know, in my head, I will say, expecting, oh, is Twitch going to come top lane? But if I'm completely honest, I'm not too scared. Like, if I, if a Twitch comes top lane, and I land the stun, I can kill him. He is insanely squishy. Vayne looking for that Jin doesn't get it. Very close to getting it. And then I think actually ends up getting caught and Jin gets the kill with ulti, I think. So, unfortunate that the Jin just got another double kill when he nearly died. I think he nearly died because the Vayne went all in and Velkoz was trying to help the Twitch do the dragon. But, uh, alas... Uh, bot lane unfortunately not going perfectly again if you ever see fps drops just reminding people i am tabbing out of the game occasionally so if you ever see it go down i think it's to 17 fps is normally the number it's because i'm alt tabbed uh obviously you'll see 144 most of the time because i've hard capped the fps to 144 and with this obviously new computer it doesn't really move from that uh, as you would expect a 3090 should probably deal with league of legends fairly well um, so I am looking to buy the blade. So Aurelia is one of the champions in League that she's not a mythic item rusher. She synergizes incredibly well with blade. So she does go that first. Um, item wise for the mythic, there are a couple options, but generally it does seem that the immortal shield bow is her favorite and kind of the best one. Again, no idea why the Yasuo is trying to even attempt to fight the Vladimir at this point. He is just hyper feeding. Um, and also bot lane. Yes, that is an 8-0 Jin. 8 kills, 0 deaths. So yeah, th I think by now, definitely I wasn't recording a live commentary anymore. We're doing okay. We're 2-1. Our only death was to technically 3 people. Unfortunately here again, we get the Vladimir who is mega roaming. He just straight up gets killed because it's, it's Blue Kane who's hyper squishy. And that leaves me then completely by myself and I end up dead. One more auto would have got the Kale, but I don't know why the Kane did that. So... Yeah, so as you can see, it's a bit of a rough game with nine kills to then 19. Not looking good. We're half of the kills. Uh, but as I've always said, frustration can seep in. Salt saltiness can, can kind of creep in. But the one thing I will always give myself as a player, I'll always keep trying to win the game. If the game is not a surrender or, you know, let's say no one opens. I, I generally don't really open ever myself. But let's say three of my teammates have opened. Okay, by then the game is kind of over. Over. But if none of my teammates are AFKing, it's not a surrender vote. I will keep trying to win the game. So, yeah, we'll keep watching it. I think the game is around a half an hour game. So we're about halfway through, roughly, give or take, a little bit. Uh, Yasuo, unfortunately, I think is dying again. Um, I, he might get a good ulti off. So he does get a good ulti, which then gives time for the, the cane. So that's good, you know, to get the shutdown. Um, so that's at least a positive that, yes, Yasuo is dying again. But at least the, the Vladimir does end up dead from the outcome of it. So not too bad. Yeah, because obviously if you were noticing, the Vladimir was tower diving again. Um, and, you know, some people say, what do you even do in that situation? Well, that's kind of the point. That's why I wouldn't recommend a champion like Yasuo. A champion that is incredibly hit or miss like Yasuo is just... There's not a lot of point to play it over, you know, as simple as it sounds, over Vlad. Like I've said in this video, Vlad is stupidly easy to play, way easier than a Yasuo, and arguably is better. Again, doesn't mean you can't beat them. Like, again, keep watching this game. It doesn't mean that you can't do well as Yasuo. But it, I'm just saying for the average player, it's probably better just to play something that scales into late game that is pretty easy to pull off. And Vladimir is that in a nutshell completely. Um, but anyway, some kills in bot lane. Looking for the Kale again. I missed, obviously, the, uh, the stun, unfortunately. And uh, go for the ultimate, looking for the big all-in, and nearly get it. One more auto would have got the kill. I'm not sure if she had ulti up, because I'm surprised she didn't actually ult. And, oh, no, it's here. Sorry, I said earlier, because I remembered. Right now, look at where the cane is. He is literally farming instead of going for the Kale. No idea why he continued that. I thought it was earlier into the game, but no, it was that moment there. That, yeah, he was farming Krugs instead of finishing the Kale off. Quite unfortunate. But that is where, you know... Some people just don't pay attention to the minimap or what's going on all the time. They kind of get focused in their little world. That's where if you've ever seen, you know, it's, there's a thing called vein spotting. That if you see a vein, just beeline it for someone in a team fight and she ends up dead before she even gets there. You're like, what the hell was that? It's because they, in their, they're, they're, while they're playing, they are just literally looking at one target. I'm killing that person and then they don't notice what's happening around them. So they end up just dying on the way. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go back. What I, Again, small mistake here. I think I should have probably bought the Vamp Scepter because I could have, I, I would have been able to fully afford it. I teleport mid just because the game isn't going great. Maybe I can make an impact around the map at least. Twitch going to go down. And unfortunately for me, I go for a big t like play. I'm like, oh, Twitch is around. He ends up dead from Flash. So unfortunately for me, he ended up dead from Flash. I give a free kill to the Kale. I don't know if she just ran or I think she teleported for that play. But yeah, I'll be honest. I was surprised that Twitch died from Ignite. 
But I was also big, like, quite surprised I didn't have the, like, I didn't see him. I thought I was definitely in range to uh, get vision of the Twitch and Q, but apparently not. He must have just been out of range. Um, because I would say the invisibility range is roughly the same as Aurelia Q. I'd, I'd say they're probably quite similar. But, alas, it wasn't to be. So, yeah, game not looking too good, but continue trying to win. Obviously, yeah, that play, when I played quite well this game, I was 2-2 two and two before that. The game isn't going well anyway. That play was a little bit of a tilter. Like, okay, I'm going to go for the Twitch. Oh, he died anyway from the Yasuo Ignite, and I'm dead. Great. So that sucked, but uh, it is the way that sometimes it goes. Enemy team get the next dragon, which is Cloud. I think, the, yeah, the map itself is Cloud Dragon this game. The Lux has to be careful. Like, I don't know, is it just me or that Lux skin really looks like Soraka? Uh, Jin Ultimate over the top, dead from the Vladimir. Enemy team kind of snowballing now. I decided to stick in top lane, I think, for a while. And you will see there, I did say yes. So as my point is, if the game is in session, because some people have always made this point, like, oh, has you clicked uh, yes when you won the game eventually or whatever it may be in the past, doesn't mean that, like, the game is frustrating. It looks like it's a complete loss. I will say yes to surrender votes, but if it's a no, I'll always keep playing to win. That's the point. There are some people out there, and maybe it's maybe that's more common, that when there's a surrender vote, they completely give up trying to win the game. I won't give up trying to win the game. I'll keep trying to win. Anyway, the Kale is nearby. I'm going to go for it. Missed the unfortunate uh, thingy. And yes, again, the Twitch is here as well. So again, getting 2v1. Unfortunately, the Jin snipes it. So he's legendary. He might be 10-0 at this point. But I end up dead, unfortunately, to again, an outnumbered situation. So Lux is dead. Yasser's going to go for the Vlad. He will end up getting it, which is good. Laser gets blocked by... Well, actually, he just stopped it, I think. Um, maybe a dead Velkoz. W hit for the Kane. Will end up dead. No, he won't. Oh, maybe he will. The ultimate. There we go. Again, it is blue Kane. Red Kane, arguably, would have been obviously better, in, as in most instances it is. But uh, blue Kane, the one thing this game, and I did say it in, in the commentary. Meanwhile, Twitch was trying to base stealth. That was very weird. Um, the one thing I will say is blue Kane this game, the enemy team is actually very squishy. Kale, Twitch... Vlad is squishy, but in a different way. Yes, he gets health, but he doesn't get stats. So he is actually fairly squishy. His just health bar looks healthy. Jin is squishy. Velkoz is squishy. So Blue Kane can do work against squishy targets. Although I would say Red Kane on average is probably better to go. Um, anyway, going to go bot lane. Uh, we just need to get kind of like traction going, if anything. And uh, just reminding everybody, right now we are 2-4 in Aurelia. We are 1 and a third item maybe one and a half item complete and what you're about to see is potentially where the game starts to get a little bit better so this is what i've always said aurelia is my kryptonite she's nuts and some people agree with me let me know what you think down below but some people disagree some people are like oh no huz that's just a personal problem you have which again fair every single player in league i can guarantee has a champion that is not an overpowered champion but you just don't know how to deal with it everybody has that type of champ mine's aurelia and yeah, we're about to, you're about to see something that in my head kind of backs up that Aurelia is crazy. So again, I'm two and four. I'm not fed at all. So let's watch. <laughs> so I'm waiting in a bush and Velkoz's bot lane. Jin is now here and I am thinking like, do I go for it? And because I've been found out, I'm like, well, I have to go for it. Hit the ulti, land the double stun and I'm going to just one shot him, go back on the Jin and finish him off. So just there, I completely 2v1'd the enemy bot lane who has fed this game, literally obliterating them, that it wasn't even close. And that just there, you can see my gold down here. I'm now at 2,500 gold. So in my head, and I think I said it in the game, in my head, a 2 for anything basically champion should never be able to 2v1 fairly easily and people in twitch chat did say okay yeah you did it but i did play it well i hit the ulti i hit the double stun you played it well huz sure i played it well but i still don't think i should have been able to 2v1 they got annihilated i was one shotting them practically my damage was insanely high i just don't think that's cr i just don't think that's healthy like that to me was insane so we do end up getting the double kill and that's what i said the momentum in the game you know sometimes you could be losing a game but when something happens, it kind of is like a, a flick of the switch. So you're like, oh, God, whoa, whoop, that just happened? Hell yeah, let's go. 
And it does seem that that did help a little bit, at least with me. And, you know, that's always going to perk you up. Like, it's like you've been having a bit of a rough game, and boom, you just double kill. I think the Jin at the time was 11-0. He was 11 kills, zero deaths. I got a thousand gold bounty for the Jin. That's always going to perk you up, no matter what. Anyway, Twitch in a bit of a misposition. He's going to get jumped on by the Kane. Look at the Kane's damage with the Lux combination. Vlad goes solo. I'm going to go for him, uh, combining with my team. Unfortunately... The uh, Jin snipes, and uh, that is going to be that. But the game, the, well, the fight itself has not gone too bad. The, the Yasuo going all in. I think he ends up basically getting one shot, triple kill for the Jin. But that's a one team fight. Kale didn't get involved. She's in bot lane. I got double buffs. I'm feeling a little bit more confident, feeling a bit spicy. So I think I could 1v1 her, especially that I've got Lux nearby. But we decided to go over for the dragon. And, you know, we're starting now. Hey, Huz, you're, you're doing pretty good. Unfortunately for me, right, I, I watch here. I actually tried to click the ward. I couldn't literally click the ward. Um, so I wanted to finish this because obviously the Kale is nearby. We know she's nearby and she's got vision of this. So she will naturally try to stop us. But we're going to try and go for hit the ulti, miss the stun. Lux comes in using my W to avoid the damage. And then we're just going to auto attack and boom, we get the kill. So I'm pretty strong um, at this stage of the game. Do end up getting the dragon. And what I should have done here was completely back out. Naturally... It would make sense for the enemy team to be nearby. Fortunately, Twitch is there. I was obviously stealth and Velkos was there. So I do end up dead. Again, not a big deal. And it's, it's just like, if you're looking for like, you know, you're not making big mistakes. I should have just backed off completely. I, you know, I cleared the ward. I went to go get the the, the, the fruit, whatever it's called. Bramble fruit or whatever. Is it called honey fruit, maybe? Um, I shouldn't have done that. I should have just walked away, got the dragon, been happy. But still, you know, good recovery. Remember, we were two and four at one point. We're now 7-5. So that's not bad at all. Um, and we're going to go Wits End next. So Wits End, I think, is actually a very strong item on, on quite a few champions. It directly helps to this game. Remember, the Jin is the AD damage. The rest of them have AP. So Magic Resist is very effective, especially if we deal with the Jin really early. They are pure a AP at that point. Um, but we're going to try our best. Wits End is good. I am pinging Baron because I am worried that they are doing it at this point, I will say. And Kane was going the other side of the map. So I was slightly concerned that they might be doing it, but they weren't. And I was shocked that they weren't doing it, if I'm being completely honest. Because Vla we knew, I think I saw Vladimir earlier that he was in that general area. And uh, here we go. So another potential fight. Vladimir is caught alone. He W's early. You never want to W early as Vladimir. Vayne just standing still. Ends up getting the kill. Yasuo on top of the Twitch. Going to end up helping kill the Twitch. He's dead. And we're going to continue going for it. So unfortunately the Vayne. I don't know what she was doing there. Went a bit too close to the Kale. Ends up dying for free. She should have just walked away. Been happy about it. Kane though with his crazy stupid movement speed getting the kale and we will end up boom killing that so we kill four of them for one only vein dies and you can see the game has turned um you can look at the movement speed by the way for kane he backs out he goes back in he's then back on the velkos who's now dead yasso is pushing mid and we're like oh we can just do baron so i've started the baron and we ace them so you, this game was going really bad and you, and you like i said the turn it seems was the double kill in bot lane and you're like well, that didn't give you much. What that gives is morale. Never underestimate morale in anything in life. But morale is like the feeling of the game. How happy you are as a team. And seeing who, you know, just, like doesn't matter that it was me. If, if I was in this game and saw my Aurelia who's not doing too hot. Oh my god, the Aurelia just 2v1 the fed bot lane. Okay, maybe we can win this game. It just does, it's a positive effect. And what also seems to be kind of in action is the enemy team is falling apart a little bit. Is that, you know... The Vladimir there used W early, got caught out, doesn't have a big impact in the team fight. The Twitch got caught, I think, by the Yasuo, didn't do it much anyway. So I think the Kale wasn't even involved. So the enemy team is falling apart when it comes to their synergy playing well together. So it definitely makes this game is a... It, it's a game, you know? And uh, Yasuo having a bit of a fight. In level 16 Yasuo, remember Yasuo we said earlier is a scaling champion. He ends up dead, unfortunately. Yeah, Vladimir does die in the end, though. But, uh, yeah, Yasuo scales. You know, whether a good or bad Yasuo, they do scale. I'm going to make my way over, miss the uh, unfortunate, miss the thing, and we do end up helping get the kill because the uh, Kane went on that. Um, I have missed, I will say again, I don't play Aurelia. So me doing okay on Aurelia, I will say, it does say if I actually play this champion, I'd get better with her. Would be a lot scarier with the champion. Um... 
because yeah, we are missing a little bit here or there, but it is, you know, it happens. Uh, Kane, blue Kane, look at the mobility, look at the E, look at the moves, look at the players, and boom. Don't know why Velkos stayed, if I'm completely honest, but that now opens up the potential to break the base and now go for the first inhibitor. So how, you know, how the tables turn, pressure, momentum, we have Baron, bam, we now get an inhib. So... This kind of video so far, I will say, does show that games aren't always over. You can turn games, and that's my point. Yes, I clicked yes to a surrender vote earlier. Again, if the game was over, then I would have just got out of a, a frustrating game at the time. But it doesn't mean it's always a loss. Uh, if it's a no vote, continue playing to win. That's the point. Never stop trying to win the game. Keep trying to win the game pressing yes on a surrender vote is fine you know frustration exists and sometimes the healthiest thing to do is get out of a frustrating situation by surrendering but it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to always lose the game so this is quite interesting to me so the yasuo who had a pretty poor lane phase we saw earlier in the game was literally dying to the vladimir by getting tower dove just two of you won the fed people on the enemy team the two fed people are the vladimir and Jin. the yasuo just annihilated them and that was a Yasuo that was getting completely tower dove by the Vlad. So, again, scaling does exist. Yes, Vladimir does scale incredibly well, but so does Yasuo. And if Yasuo hits his combo of landing his ulti, etc., he's going to kill you. So, maybe the enemy team, I will say, maybe the enemy team got a little bit relaxed this game. Because that does happen. Oh, we're winning. This is going to be easy. They relax a little bit. And that opens the floodgates to, oh, we're now dying too much. Oh, we're dead. Oh, they're winning. So I will say, even if you're winning a game, try not to relax too much. It happens to me. I, I've said it to you guys, If especially if the enemy team has a AFK or something, I really relax and I stop focusing. And I know I do that, but it's very hard not to because the game becomes boring. Um, and even if you're stomping, if you're winning as a victory stomp, the game also can become boring. But anyway, we're breaking open the tier two, and this is where we do make a small mistake. The Yasuo obviously feeling quite good about that situation that he just 2 v one Here's the two fed people again. And this is the difference of not landing your combo. Boom, he just gets one shot and then leaves me completely to dust. I'm like, oh, you're dead. I'm dead. It's not a complete disaster because in mid lane, my team end up getting three kills in mid. So not a complete disaster, but that just does show the difference. Yes, sir, Yasuo scales well. Meanwhile, the, the snipe from Jin. Yes, he scales well, but the 2v1 is when he hit a double Q into his ultimate. Boom, that's going to go well. And there, I think he got a little bit cocky. Oh, I just 2v1'd you guys. I can just go all in really dumb. And the Jin flash, the, the, Yas uh, the Vladimir W'd at the right time, and boom, he's, he's dead. And then I'm there as Aurelia going, ah. This is a problem. <laughs> so, yeah, it does show how, like, just certain situations can change fights also, like, at a flip of a coin. But, again, not too bad, because in mid lane, it was technically that whole fight, I believe, was a three for three. Me and Yasuo die. Y Lux dies at the end because got, she got sniped. But then uh, Velkoz, Twitch, and Kale die in mid. So, not a disaster, but it, you know, refocuses you a little bit. I think if, you know, the, I will say also, the Yasuo build was very bad. Twitch chat was talking about that. Really bad Yasuo build um, for some reason. Like, obviously, he's probably been a bit triggered about the healing of Vlad, so he's rushed a, a mortal reminder. But Yasuo, in his whole scaling, needs crit. That's a big part of that champion. And there's, I don't even think he's got to 100% crit at this point. He's rushing even a Spirit's Visage next. So, incredibly weird build um, to go. He is looking for another engage. They're looking for the Kale. Kane in the area as well. We've put two people on the side. And this is what surprised me, man. Watch this. Look how long that Kale ult lasts. That shocked me. I was like, wait, you're still in ulti? And, and apparently people said at level 16, her ulti lasts like three and a half seconds. So that's a, that's a long time. Um, anyway, uh, fight here or there still happening. At the moment, advantage. And I just go nuts. I flash over the wall. As you all know, I love killing Twitches. I die, but I land I land a stun on the, on the Jin, And that will end up getting the kill with the cane. So that was really good. Not a bad play. And I do get a Ginsu, but it's not going to make an effect because I believe that is the game. So this game, if anything, does show you can keep trying to win games. Yes, you know, it's looking really bad. It's, you know, this game we're getting owned. The enemy team would double our kills, remember. Keep trying to win. Like, always keep trying to win, even if the game is going poop. Um, what I would say was a blessing in disguise. I think we'll look at the damage done in a second. Blessing in disguise was the Twitch. He did not play very well in the end. His damage was very low. 
probably would have been a lot harder if he went AD, because then at least the enemy's damage would have been split, AD and AP more. The only AD damage was Jin, so you could build, like, I would build a Wit's End. I built a Wit's End because there was four AP people, only one AD. Um, but yeah, we end up winning. I put Stayed Cool on the Yasuo, because again, he had a rough lane phase, but obviously kept with it, so well done to him. We got up to 18 LP Plat 2. Uh, so we're at 36. We've got 876, 195 farm. I get honored a couple times because I think I played fairly well. I think people are like, yeah, that double kill and bot lane is kind of the, the moment that the game started turning. Not terrible damage. We out damaged the Kale by 3,000. The Twitch, as you can see, did the least damage in the game by a fair margin. The Vladimir and Jin were the two fed ones, so we didn't even catch their damage. But we, we just did good. We turned the game. So I was very happy about the one. If you enjoyed it, that was me on Aurelia. Thank you so much for watching. Please do throw a like on the video. Can we get 500 likes? That would be awesome. Throw a subscribe if you've not also. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.